Okay, so here we are speaking to the lovely Marina Sirtis. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. The first question I have to ask is, you've probably been asked it a couple of times, caravans, it's a bit random. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you ask me to go somewhere, I'll show up, right? <laughs> Especially if it's a free trip to England. Yeah. Because this was this was this was ideal because I didn't have plans to come to England this year. So when Nikki asked me to come, it yeah. really was a treat. So was you stateside at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I've been stateside for 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's always any, a treat. Any excuse to come home. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, did you actually, do you have quite a familiarity with ca caravans then, or is it just random? No, it's not a... really. Apart from our lovely trailers, of course, on the set, which were yeah. caravans. Yeah. Which actually, um, I had a flat in New York, and uh, our, our caravans at work were, mm -hmm. I think my caravan was bigger and more luxurious than my New York apartment. <laughs> Before I ask any Star Trek questions, um, I read that you're currently working, uh, going to be working on a project called uh, Unbelievable. Is that right? No, it's not actually. Ah, that's incorrect information yes, from IMDb. Yes, it is. It is incorrect information. That didn't work out. Ah. Uh, yes. But, okay. uh, Michael, but Michael Dawn is in it. Actually, there's okay. a lot of Star Trek people in it. Yeah. Um, I think some of the old ones like... Um, uh, uh, Celeste Yarnell oh, yeah. and uh, Barbara Luna, I think, mm -hmm. are in it. And um, Keenix seems to appear everywhere. Who? <laughs> Walter Keenix. Is Walter in it? I, I, I don't think Walter's in it. I don't know, but I he don't... seems to appear everywhere. No, I don't, I don't think Walter's in it. Um, yeah, there's a few ex Star Trek people in it. Um, the kind of guest starring mm -hmm. kind, kind of people, yeah. Are you uh, still doing a lot of voiceover work at the moment? Not as much as I was, but um, to be honest, it's my least favourite form of acting. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't really bother me if I'm not doing a lot of voiceover acting. Because a lot of the uh, Trek actors do a lot of voiceover yes. work, but I suppose it's so much harder to inflict any sort of emotion or get across any sort of story just from a script? Well, it's it's actually um, a, a real art, I mm -hmm. think, voiceover acting, and I've never really been trained in it. Um, I've mm -hmm. been lucky to be to do the stuff that I've done, um, but uh, I don't do voices, really. Mm -hmm. I do accents, not so much voices. Yeah. But I remember when we were shooting Gargoyles and we mm -hmm. had... It was basically a Star Trek reunion every week. <laughs> um they had voice actors in there who just did voice acting, mm -hmm. and the director would say something like, "Oh, I need an old ma an old Scottish man who talks like a dog who mm -hmm. can do that." And somebody would put their hand up and do this amazing thing, and I'll go, "How the <laughs> heck do they do that?" So um, it's a real art. Form. It is a real art form, yeah. And uh, I have to say, other than Star Trek, I was pleasantly surprised because a couple of years ago I got into Without a Trace. Oh. Oh, and you saw me in that yes, too. It yes, it was fantastic. You don't it is really good episode. Thank you, thank good. you. Yeah, I do, I do, I do turn up as in, in guest shots. I did Grey's Anatomy last year. Mm -hmm. um, I've done, you know, the closer with Kira Sedgwick. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I, I, it's nice to do. I get some really nice parts in um, other people's shows now. Yeah, definitely. So with uh, Troy, it wasn't until disaster that she really had a chance to step up in any sort of command sort of phase right do you personally wish that Jellicoe had forced that uniform on her a little bit earlier on in the series well we only had him for one season didn't uh, for yeah. one episode it, I should say and yeah. that was actually that was chain of command was yeah it, it was it, it was one. but I was just saying do you wish that maybe Troy had the chance to, to be... be in a uniform before well actually um, yes I do uh, the reason that I wasn't wearing one from the beginning was that I was actually a little bit, a few pounds overweight, and I just didn't, I know. That's probably only by Hollywood terms. By so. Hollywood terms, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm the fattest actress in Hollywood, by the way. <laughs> Uh, and one of the skinniest in the building at the moment. So. You see, I know, it's, it's, it makes no sense at all. But anyway, um, it was basically because I didn't look good in the space, so it didn't mm -hmm. suit me. So, um, but then I, they were on at me and on at me all, you know, over the, every five minutes to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. And so I had to I had to lose weight. Because it was really from that point when you got on the jumpsuit, the proper jumpsuit, that 
your character just seemed to I know. turn around. I know. It was weird. It was it was almost as if once they couldn't see her cleavage anymore, mm -hmm. they realised, oh yeah, she's part of the crew. We can actually write it, her yeah, into exactly. the situation. Yeah, exactly. She's actually part of the crew with a proper job, and she's been to Starfleet Academy. You know, so why you know why yeah. not? I was very happy with being in the spacesuit. Yeah. To be honest. And with the uh, with the wharf relationship right at the end. For me personally, it felt like the progression through the seventh season was quite natural, but then it was quite forced to push them together right, right. at the end. What was your feelings on that? Because obviously they had had the whole Riker arc all the way through. Right. Uh, I never I never liked that Worf and no. Troy um, relationship. My opinion was that the producers have just seen Beauty and the Beast once too many times, and I didn't think it was very original. Um, yeah. And also, Michael Dorn's my best friend over there, mm -hmm. and it was kind of naff kissing your best friend. <laughs> yeah. It was really kind of, oh, this isn't right, this isn't right. No, he's my best friend. He's like a brother to me, you know. Yeah. So, no, it never felt normal and or natural to me. Michael Dawn loved it, I have mm -hmm. to say, because he'd been trying to get his lips on mine for seven years. <laughs> But, uh... Well, on a similar note, uh, <laughs> when I spoke to Jonathan Frakes earlier last year, he, he, he did try to insist that the uh, bathtub scene was completely in the nude. Yeah, <laughs> so. well, he would. I mean, I actually, I actually was... I actually... The top half of me was. Yeah. It was. Um, but, because uh, obviously I couldn't have any bra straps yeah. or anything showing. And we were sitting in a hot tub, which mm -hmm. they just kept, like aerating to make the bubbles yeah and so and because we were in it we just stayed in it while they were lighting and stuff and they would top it up with hot water Did so you come we, out like prunes we came out like prunes but i but i realized at one point jonathan's eyes were getting wider and wider <laughs> because the bubbles had subsided <laughs> and my girls were just floating on the top of the water so i went oh oh make more bubbles make more bubbles so yeah uh, and obviously one of the constant jibes that you must get is you're the one that crashed the ship twice. Yeah, apparently... Well, the second one was under orders. Yeah, so I do... I, I, I know. I, I do say that. Old Baldy told me to crash the ship <laughs> in Nemesis, so I had to follow orders. But I do have a fan... Melissa, uh, sorry, Megan. My fan, Megan. Um, she explained to me yeah. that... I didn't actually crash the, crash the ship. She explained you saved it. it. She she explained it in technical. I mean, I had no clue, but she explained it in technical terms that actually I didn't crash the ship. But I have to say, that planet just came out of nowhere. All it right. <laughs> It really did. Yeah. You would have thought that there's plenty of space I to know, avoid. I know, that planet just came, honestly, it's like an old lady driving a car down the road. There she was, out of nowhere. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of your fans, there's been quite a um, push from some of your fans to try and get you on to Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Date time. And it didn't work. No. Are they going to try again for next season? I don't know. I did hear a rumour that they actually don't like you promoting yourself to get on it. So the more you keep stirring, yeah, the more you're... Yeah, so they so now I'm, my feeling is now they know I want to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I should do... I mean, it wasn't my campaign. My no, fans did it. Yeah, fans. my fans did it. But um, they're asking me again this year, do you, do you want us to do it again? And I'm not sure that I do because it might be working against me rather than for me. So yeah. they all know I want to do it over there. So the problem yeah. is it, it's chock-a-block with reality stars. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, yes. it really is. It really is, because they're current, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and reality's so big. You could always come over for Strictly over I here. would rather do Strictly, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's a better show. <laughs> she said under bit, her breath. A bit more upper class. Well, it's just more fun. I think <laughs> yeah. it's more fun, because yeah. we don't take ourselves as seriously as the Americans Oh, it's all do. very tongue-in-cheek. It's all very tongue-in-cheek here, but over there, it's like they're curing cancer, for goodness sake. <laughs> So, and that's just one of the big differences stateside. It's very literal. Everything's very literal. Yeah, yeah, ir you, irony is lost on Americans generally. Do you find yourself getting into a lot of situations? I do. I'm all, I'm all, I found myself saying, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. Because they don't, they think I'm being serious. So otherwise everyone would just think I'm, that they you're They think complete... I'm being insulting everybody all the time, <laughs> yes. So what, have you got many projects coming up in the next year? Um, a few. A few. I'm very superstitious, though, so I don't talk about them until I've actually signed the contract. Yeah. So, but as you know, 
the fans will know about it instantly and the word will get out in a nanosecond. Oh yeah, well, that's the thing. There's so many places reporting everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we've got a really good guy. As soon as he sees anything, the whole world knows. No, well, see, I don't even need a publicist anymore because I've got the fans. It, it's very much changed recently with the whole social media aspect yeah. of things. Yes. So, Not that I do social media because I'm no. a total Luddite, actually. I, I hate think, technology. I don't think you even need to, though. Well, but I don't... Everyone else does it for you. Yeah, but the thing is, what I hate about technology is the fact that nowadays, because of the instant... The the, the instantness... I know that's not a word, I just made it up, of it. um, People expect you to be at their beck and call Mm -hmm. when they want. And I actually had this conversation with LeVar Burton, because he's always telling me off that I never answer my cell phone Mm -hmm. or my mobile, and I I don't respond to my emails Mm -hmm. promptly. Um... I do my emails in the morning. Yeah. And then I close my computer and I don't go back to it till the following morning. Yeah. Um, as for my as for my mobile, I've got um, my car's a stick shift. Yeah. So if I've got a phone in one hand and a st- what you am can't I going to going to steer with, right? And also, um, I still have an old fashioned answering machine in my house so that I can screen my calls and talk yeah. to who I want to talk to when I talk to Caller them. IDs are godsend. Right, so this thing of, like, I'm supposed to be available to the world 24-7 mm-hmm. just doesn't fly with me. Yeah. It's like, I will call you back when I feel like it, yeah. you know, or when I feel like talking to you, or um, or I may not, you know. It's, mm-hmm. I just don't like being expected to be at everyone's beck and call all the time. Yeah. Have you got any plans to do um, any conventions over here in Blighty? Well, I actually met someone just a minute ago who asked me if I was available in July to come back to Manchester. Oh, that would be cool. So we'll see. Maybe that yes. might, uh, might happen. Because uh, you're very much more conventions in stateside. I only because they don't ask. You. No, no. Only because they don't ask me to come. I mean, I don't just show up out of the blue. <laughs> you know, I don't just show up at the conventions. Oh, hello, I'm here. No, I mean, they, I'm invited. Yeah. You know, they haven't invited me to England for about two or three years now. Well, that's awful, especially considering uh, Star Trek London last year. You See, d- and I wasn't there. No. Gates with bloody Fadden, right? <laughs> she wasn't there, either. Oh, she wasn't? Who no. was there? Uh, the only uh, Sir Patrick, Brent, Michael Dawn right. from TNG right. were there. So, yeah, no, it would have been lovely. I know, so. I know. I would have loved to come. Especially I mean, after TNG's 25th. Exactly. So, you know, you have to get onto the promoters in England because it's not me, it's them. No, I, I'll they be have straight to invite on to me. Jill of DeGro from Media okay. 10 to say... This is what we need this year. Exactly. Thank you very much. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. God bless, sweetheart.